guys, we're ready to continue in Romans chapter 8. This is actually video number 2 for this week, so it's going to cover verses 6 through 11. So I hope you'll open up to that section of Scripture. We really are going to start to really focus. We're going to see Paul really focus, I believe, from justification in the first seven chapters to sanctification. And I don't think that we, we really understand this. This is why so many people struggle, but I just know that we are going to find so much peace and so much purpose in understanding better the person of the Holy Spirit. And so that's what we're going to see here in this section of scripture. But I want to kind of go through really the systematic theology of what we need to understand about the person of the Holy Spirit. The first thing that we need to remember it is, is that he is the th third person in the Godhead. And so it says, and he, that means that he's equal to the Father, he's equal to the Son in deity, in personhood, and personality. So he's not less than. The Holy Spirit is equal to God the Father and God the Son in every way, but he has a different role. And that role is to abide, to dwell in each and every believer. But I love that John MacArthur kind of went on and kind of explained the role that the Holy Spirit has. He says this, he said, he knows the deep things of God. He loves the saints. He makes decisions. He speaks. He prays. He teaches. He guides. He commands. He fellowships. He comforts. He may be grieved. He may be quenched. He may be lied to. He may be tested. He may be resisted. And he may be blasphemed. And so I think that makes it so clear. That's why you want to understand the person of the Holy Spirit because he dwells in us as believers. And so let's not be afraid of it. Let's see what scripture has to say. And let's see what Paul is going to explain to those in Rome and to us today. But the first thing before he really gets into the spirit and its power is that there are two mindsets. There's only two. Once again, there's no middle ground. You know, that either you're justified and that means you are in Christ and you're saved and you've placed all your faith in Christ Jesus as Savior, or you're in, your mind is set on the flesh and you're not justified. You're still lost and you're dead in your trespasses and sins and therefore you're dead spiritually. And so those of us who are in Christ, our mind should be set on things of the Spirit, that our mind is on things above, that we have life now and we know that we have life eternally. But those who are dead in their trespasses and sins have their mind set on temporary things, on selfish things, on the world's values, all those things. You have a total different mindset, which means you have a total different lifestyle. So look at verse 6. It says, for the mindset on the flesh is death. You know, there's no spiritual life if you are not in Christ. And so your life revolves around you and what you want and what you desire and what you think and all those things. And that leads to death. You're already spiritual dead, but it will lead to eternal death. And that means separation from God. And you will receive God's wrath and condemnation because you will die in your sin. But the mind set on the spirit is is life and peace. And so that's one of those wonderful things that we need to understand, that we have life now, but we also have life ahead of us that we know that when we die, we will leave this earthly tent and our spirit will go directly to be with God. And so we have life now. He, he, he controls and rules and reigns our life now. But we also have peace, that we're not afraid, that our faith and our life and our decisions are not made on circumstantial things, that we have our minds set above. And so because of that, we have life and peace. Our life looks different because we're in Christ and, and our mind is set on the things of the Spirit. Then verse 7 says this, because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God. You know, I think that there's there's a part of us that have that kind of have forgotten how different the life of an unbeliever really is always going to look because they're not capable. We're going to see this. They're not capable of being good or doing anything good or getting or even they have no relationship with God. See, that's kind of something we don't understand. They're actually hostile toward God. 
because they're dead in their trespasses and sins and they're rejecting him as savior. And so because of that, it's not just that they're disobedient to the law and they don't do nice things and they don't they don't keep the law. It's deeper than that. It's deeper than disobedience. They're actually hostile toward God. But and that means in their thinking and that means in their actions. But it says for they do not subject themselves to the law of God for it is not they're not even able to you know see we get so frustrated that lost people live like lost people but that's exactly what they're going to do because their mind is not set on the spirit they don't have the spirit dwelling in them they've rejected Christ and so because of that their life looks like that they're not able to please God they're not able to it says and those who are who are in the flesh cannot please God. It's not even an option. You know, I don't think we totally ever understand that, but it's true. Because either you have a mindset on the spirit or you have a mindset in the flesh. Either you're justified or you're not justified. Either you have God's spirit living in you or you don't. And so because of that, if your mind is set on the flesh, your mind is set on death, you are hostile toward God, and you're subject to receiving that due punishment, and you're not even able to please God here on earth. You're not able to. However... You are not in the flesh, talking about us. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So that's why we need to understand it, because now we're justified. We're in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. And I love that we need to look at all these ifs that we're going to run into in the rest of the section, because it really means examine yourself. So one of the ways that you know that you are in Christ and that you've been justified is because you'll know that the Spirit of God dwells in you. That, you know, when you read Scripture, you know, you, you know that the Spirit is teaching you. You know, all those things that John MacArthur said, that he explains deep things, that he loves us, he helps us make decisions, he speaks, he prays, he teaches, he guides, he commands, he fellowships, he comforts. We, we know that, that those are all things that we have in the Spirit because we're in Christ. And so if the Spirit dwells in you, then you, that, that's that assurance, that's that seal that you're in Christ. It says, but if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Do you see? that? I mean, there's only two camps, guys, justified and not justified. And so you have either the mindset on the Spirit or mindset on the flesh. And so that means that if you don't have God's Spirit dwelling in you because you've re repented and received Christ as Savior, then you don't belong to Him. You have no relationship to Him. You cannot please Him as much as you try. That's why you need to get on your knees and repent and receive Christ. And it says, if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. And so we understand this too, that we have a new relationship with death in the sense that we know that death has lost its sting for us. Because why? Because we are now in the spirit. And so now when we die, and let's just be honest, this passage is telling us that our body is dying that we're getting older. We know that this is the, the way that, you know, the, the ratio to death is one and one. We're all going to die unless Jesus returns. And so it says our body is dying, but hey, our, our living continues. We'll just leave this body and we'll go to be with Jesus forever. And so because of that, we're alive because of who we are in Christ. And then it says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And so it says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead. See, that's the power of the resurrection. That's what we celebrated on Easter, that Jesus rose again. But it's the power in us. And so because of that, it says that same power that raised Jesus from the dead raised you from that spiritual death into spiritual life. And now his spirit dwells in you. It's made its home in you. And that's the seal. He's not ever going to leave you because of that. And so because of that, we need to understand the relationship that we have with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit lives in us. And that's the power 
to obey. That's the power of us that our, our home is not here. It's eternal. So we want to set our minds that way. So we set our minds to be on things of the Spirit because we're in the Spirit and the Spirit is in us.